Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Quest for Faith with Brian. And typically on this channel, I spend a lot of time talking about the Catholic Church, theology, interviewing converts. That's generally what my content is. But today I'm taking a left turn. I'm uh, going to be talking about my experiences going through Helena and the five things that I learned over the last few weeks. Um, so to put everything in the context, uh, I... Y'all, this is just, this is just crazy. So we, the storm hit us Friday morning. We lost power. So that's September twenty seventh. We lost power uh, about seven o'clock in the morning. Is I think when the power went out. Um, and we didn't get power back on until October third, which was Thursday. So almost an entire week of no power here. Um. The crazy thing is, is the week before that, I had been informed that I was losing my job. And so um, I lost my job on the day after I got power back, which is fantastic. So when I say it's been a whirlwind of an experience, uh, yeah. Um, but I'll, I'm going to do a different video talking about what I'm going to do with the channel and everything like that, especially since being unemployed, I have a little bit more time. Um, but yeah, so we, uh, we lost power Friday morning and we spent a whole week with no power. We had running water, thank God. And um, we did okay. My family did okay. Um, to kind of put it in the context, uh, I'll have some pictures up up here. Um, we, there was, I, I don't understand how my house didn't get hit that hard. By the grace of God, we just had a bunch of big branches fall, medium-sized branches, not big. We have a few, one or two big ones, but mainly just twigs and medium-sized branches fall off trees in the backyard. There's a picture of it right there. Um, we had, I lost a bush in the front yard which was an ugly bush that my wife didn't want. So praise be to God. And on that picture, I'm putting it up right here. If you look across the street, it looks like there's a bunch of bushes laying on the ground. Those are trees that fell over in my neighbor's yard. The neighbor behind, right directly behind me had a massive branch fall off one of his trees. Um, a neighbor kind of, if you're looking at that tree fall, this that picture is still up there. And you go to the you turn left right when you get to the end of that street, which isn't far. It's there's only one house before you have to take a right. Um, there's the neighbors over there had two massive trees just snapped in half. Um, big 14 inch. I mean, like probably 14 to two foot trunks just snapped. So the fact that I got out with, some branches and a bush that fell off. No damage to my house. Everything fine. I feel like God was looking out for me. I think he was like, look, Brian, I know you just lost your job. I don't know how much more you can handle with that. I'm going to give you what you can handle in this one. I don't know. That's just how I feel about it. But what are the five things that I learned going through this? Um, the number one thing that I learned uh really is you can't can't really trust in the government to come and save you um i think fema did a is still doing an absolutely horrible job up in north carolina i'm not going to dive into politics at all i you know i i typically try to stay away from from the uh the political spear on this channel um but fema has done an awful job uh they're wasting resources like crazy like here in south carolina if you had to dump, like you were cleaning up your yard and you chopped down your own tree that fell over and you loaded it up in your truck and you went to the dump to go dump the uh, the debris, they had a FEMA representative there standing, taking names. You had to show your idea what house the, the debris came from before you could dump your stuff in the, in the local dumps here. Like why? Why? Um, I, I don't get it. Um, and that's not even to say I'm not even going to go into all the stuff we're seeing up in North Carolina. Um, the death and devastation up there um, 
from what I'm hearing from locals that are able to post or family member or people that have gone up there to help. Um, I, I think in that whole area, we, we might, the death toll could be in the thousands easily from what I'm seeing. So it's absolutely devastating. And I feel like it was extremely slow response, but on the flip side of that, one of the things that I really learned is how important it is to have a good community around you. Um, and so I've lived in a number of different places throughout the country. I grew up in California. I lived in Texas for 20 years in the Dallas area, Abilene for a few years. Um, and then we moved out here to South Carolina and the response from the people here been amazing. I mean, so yeah, number two is, is community is so important. And so get locked in with community, get a group of good friends. Um, like as soon as some of my friends got power back on, they started sending text messages out to other friends. Hey, we have power. Do y'all need to come over and wash some laundry? Um, what can we do to help? You know, we, we got things up and running. Um, even on the little league, uh, I I'm the head coach for my son's little league team right now. And um, on the message board from the parents, when people got power, they started posted in that thread. Hey, we have power. Does anybody need anything? Y'all can come over. Um, just let us know. We'll, we're here to help. Um, overwhelmingly, that was the response from everybody around here. Everybody, once they were secure in their spot, was looking out to help others. It was unbelievable. And even our parish response um, from our local church was absolutely amazing. Um, they sent an email out with a Google Doc on there where parishioners could sign up what and if they needed help. Like, hey, I had a tree fall over my driveway. I can't get out. I need guys with chainsaws to come over to help get me out. And so you could list it out there and then people could go up there and see it and people could volunteer to go out and help your your parish your the your fellow your fellow Catholics at your church. Um, just, it, it was amazing. It was amazing. But along with that is the third thing I learned was really just being patient. Um, I'm an action guy. I like, I like doing things. I don't like sitting and waiting. Um, and I had to learn to be patient because I, I would see these messages and I just, I always want to help. Like I'm, I'm just, it's just me. It's ingrained in my DNA. And I couldn't because my house wasn't secure. Uh, we didn't have power. My family needed to be here. And while this was all going on, my wife was uh, has been dealing with some shoulder injuries uh, for the last few months. And so it's not like she could do anything. Um, I was, uh, I've been having to do the cooking and all the, all the most of the cleaning. Um, and Believe me, she's just beyond frustrated because I don't. My standards for this stuff is not um, not up to par with hers, um, so I couldn't help. Um, and I was getting frustrated and upset because I, I just couldn't. And so, be patient when these things happen. Think, ooh, especially when you lose power, especially when just your infrastructure around you is just tore up. It takes a long time for things to come back online. It takes a long time. And sitting with no power, nothing to distract you. Um, you got a lot of time to think. So a day can last a very long time and night comes on quick. Uh, because once it's dark, it's dark. You know, uh, we were living in the 1800s for, for a good month or a good week there. It felt like a month. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely three um number two is there is a total difference between not having power and having water and not ha and if your power is out and you don't have water um in the blizzard that hit texas i was still in texas in 2021 that february when that blizzard hit we didn't have power for four days and we didn't have water for two of those days and those two days without water was 
absolutely awful. Um, so I was really blessed that I had water, that we had water and, uh, and cold showers are not as bad as, uh, as, as, as I thought they were. Um, I try to do cold showers every now and then. And every time I'm like, ah! but you kind of get used to them after a while and you get kind of a routine of getting in where you get your feet wet, then you get your legs wet then you start splashing on your chest and then you like duck your head in and then you're kind of fine. Um, so yeah, I, I was taking cold showers every day and, uh, so yeah, uh, water, cold showers aren't as bad as they are and water's pretty good. So the last thing I kind of want to go over is what, what do you need to prep for this, you know, to, to be okay. Um, and obviously there's degrees of okay, because if you get flooded out, there's not much you can do, right? Um, you can't stay put. Um, hopefully you have a boat or something. I don't know. Um, but even in, if you're up in North Carolina with those flooding, the boat wasn't going to help you at all because it would just send you careening down the mountainside. Um, so if you're in a situation where you're losing power, power lines down, you're not going to have power for a few days. Um, what do you need? And so that's what we're going to talk about. So there's a number of different things that I have learned sometimes the hard way, sometimes not so much, um, about going through these and I'm going to share right now. Okay, so let's talk about this. Okay, so this bad boy, you need a generator. Generator, generator, generator. And this is the generator that I have. It's not a big old fancy one. Uh, it's 3,500 uh, 3, watts at the most. It takes four gallons of gas. And it can last, it says up to 16 hours, but I will tell you guys, I ran this thing nonstop for the entirety of the time that we didn't have power. Um, every now and then I would shut it off for a few hours just to kind of let it rest and um, save on gas. Um, but I know one day I filled this bad boy up at six o'clock at night to the brim. And then I didn't have to fill it. I ran it all night long, all the next day. And I finally filled it back up again at four o'clock and I had my, um, one, one of our fridges plugged into this. I had, um, fans, box fans plugged into this. So I'm going to get into that in a minute. Um, I had our modem plugged into this because oddly enough, we didn't lose internet the whole time, but if I didn't have this generator, I would not have known that because we did lose cell service. So we didn't have cell. So, I'm going to talk about that here in a second. What to do on that. But get yourself a generator. This one's only $479. 100% worth the money. This generator has lasted me through that blizzard in 2021 in Texas. It kept our food cold. We were able to cook with the microwave. Um, get a bunch of extension cords and a generator like this or a bigger one. Um, if you get one that can, you can plug into the house and power the house, that's even better. But this one, ink, it's not going to power your house, but it's a workhorse and it's, and it's fantastic. The next thing that I would say, flashlights, get yourself some good flashlights. Um, I had good flashlights, but I'm going to get flashlights that I am going to make sure are just sitting in a bag with the batteries out of them. So that way my kids will not use them for emergency purposes only because the good flashlights I did have, I, they were either that yeah, I've had them for a while and they were broken or batteries had broken in them. And luckily I had enough. We were fine, but it was pretty frustrating that first night when I'm like, what, where are all our flashlights? Um, so make sure you get yourself some good flashlights and do not, have emergency flashlights without with the batteries out of them because the batteries will explode inside of them and then you're going to have all this corrosion in there and it's going to mess up. So do that. Um, another thing that I would recommend too is buying a few of these uh, battery uh, power banks. 
Um, I have a few of them and I've really had them more for when I'd go on business trips and I couldn't charge my phone regularly and I could just, you know, charge it on the go. Um, but these are fantastic to have and get them charged up um, when you know a storm is coming. So if you have to leave your house and you don't have a way to charge it, uh, charge your devices, you can. Um, so this definitely, I mean, we're only talking 20 bucks here. Um, the next thing that I would recommend, and this is something I don't have, um, that I'm going to look into getting, and that is a way to communicate outside of when cell goes down. And specifically, I'm thinking of all those people up in North Carolina that just got contacted maybe five days ago. Um, I mean, we're on October 14th now when I'm recording this. Um, and there is people way up in the mountains that um, it took a long time for people to get up there. But this is a really cool thing. And it's it's designed for backpackers and campers that are going way back in the backcountry. But any of these devices they have here, um, so you can spend anywhere from $300 to, uh, I don't know, $600. Yeah, so you can spend a number of uh, different type, you know, whole range of things here and look it up yourself. But it's, this is the Garmin website. Um, but what they have here is they have this, these subscription things. Um, and you can get... It'll sync up with satellites, so you can send out emergency messaging, uh, check-in reactions, text messages, weather requests, and you can. It's a monthly basis. So let's say you got a, you know, a big storm's coming, pay for it for that month, and then cancel it when everything's fine. Maybe you don't need it. Maybe your cell phone service is going to be fine. Maybe you're not going to be stranded. Um, but I think it's 100% worth buying one of these devices. Um, because we didn't have cell service for a number of days. And if we did, it was like one bar. Um, it was awful. Uh, and so we couldn't call out. If, if, if I had not have plugged our router into my generator and found out we had internet and use Wi-Fi calling through our phones, we would not have been able to communicate outside. Um, we were just going to have to sit there until they got our the cell towers back up. So this is important to set yourself up with communication. Um, the next thing that I'm going to say is get yourself one of these bad boys. Okay, you can get a nicer one than this, but this is basically the model that I use. This is a newer one. I have an older one of these Ozark uh, propane gas camping stoves. This is what I cooked on the whole week. So I had a few of those small little green bottle propane bottles that plug right into um, – well, let me – get over here let's let's look at this big picture here see if i can zoom in um yeah that plug into this thing here um it's real easy and you can get an adapter that'll plug into this so you can screw into there and screw into a big propane tank too and so i post storm i've gone out and bought two new propane tanks and filled them up so I have them and I'll cycle through them to make sure everything's fine with them. Um, but propane tanks, if you buy the new big ones, uh, they're good for 12 years when you first buy them. Um, so they're certified for 12 years so you can keep refilling them. But this was a lifesaver. Um, we had this and we had uh, uh, cast iron skillets. Um, let's see here. Where I thought I saw cast iron skillets down here. Maybe not. Maybe I'm losing my mind. Totally could be. Um, yeah, I didn't have anything like it wasn't like I was using camping cooking gear and other than that stove. So get yourself. Yeah, here we go. Look at that. 24 bucks, a set of cast iron skillets and super easy to cook on one of these things. Um, I cook three meals a day and one of those little. 15 ounce propane bottles um, lasted me four days of cooking three to four meals a day on them. So definitely worth getting. Um, yeah. So saffron propane tank. Oh, and then finally, well, not finally. Um, yeah. Is 
box fans or heaters is this gonna pull up yeah so i got heaters here um depending on where you're at so for me this last storm not having power was not that bad because it was 75 degrees after the storm blew through when you lose power and it's negative five degrees or it's really cold you need a space heater um we got these box fans um I bought these $23 box fans that we had running in our rooms at night to cool us off, um, which were fantastic. It made it where we could sleep um, because our AC wasn't working. And for whatever reason, I don't know why y'all, but my house doesn't have screens on, on windows. So unless I wanted bugs flying in the house, I couldn't open my, my uh, windows to cool everything off in the evening. Um, so definitely space heaters or box fans um get yourself some cheap ones and that way if you lose power and it's the winter you got something to keep you warm because you can plug it into your generator and if you lose power and it's the summer then you got a box fan to cool you off um and the last thing or second before last thing is a chainsaw it's depending on where you're at right so if you're in arizona find a lot of trees fall, fall in there if you're out in the plains of Oklahoma, of, of somewhere where there's not a lot of trees, you might not have to, to do that. Um, I'm not a, a chainsaw expert. I do not have a chainsaw. And thank God I didn't need one because we didn't have any crazy tree fall. But um, I'm going to buy one. And I don't know if I'm going to get this one. This is like the high end, like if you were actually cutting down some big tree stuff. Um, but I also am looking at this one too. Um, because I want a chainsaw that can cut through anything. Like I have really big trees. You guys saw that in that picture in my backyard. So if one of those things fell and I needed to cut into it. A little chainsaw isn't going to do the job. So I need to get a big one. Um, so I'm, I don't know. I might save up and see if I can get one of these. Um, one of these nicer ones. But chainsaw. So the last thing that I would recommend um, if you are ever... If you period um, have cash on hand, this was crucial the first few days after the storm. Um, cash on hand because if the stores don't have power and they still have products, you can't use your debit cards or credit cards to go buy things. You got to use cash. So I would highly, highly recommend. Um, saving up a few hundred dollars um and just have it set aside for these type of situations where it's maybe maybe uh it's a type of situation where you got to flee after the storm and there's no power but you don't have enough gas in your car um so you have to get gas but you can't get gas because your credit card machines are down but you could pump it still if you could pay for it with with anyways get some cash on hand it'll it'll be helpful because um yeah I, I know up in um north carolina where they're not going to have power for months um cash is the only way to get anything so uh make sure you guys are you got that um so yeah that's kind of the five things i've learned the things that i think you need to feel to be ready um Luckily, uh, the day before I knew the storm was coming, so I filled my car up with gas. I filled up my gas tanks for the generator. Um, and I, so we were kind of ready with that with gas. Um, it took a few days for gas stations to get gas again after after the storm. So we definitely, if we would have, if I had not have done that, we would not have been able to use a generator for very long. Um, so yeah do that make sure you you get uh get gas have cash on hand just in case and if you get these things and be, besides the chainsaw and the communication thing right like most of that is not that expensive um a normal person could save up a little bit and be able to get that generator that i use um all those little uh, box fans 23 dollars, total simple easy to do Extension cores are a little bit more expensive, but you could slowly get these things. Um, and then that way, next time a hurricane, natural disaster, you lose power, you're kind of ready to go. Um, at least you have your ducks in a row.
Um, so anyways, that's all I got. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, different than normal content that I normally talk about, but I hope you guys did enjoy it. And uh, God bless y'all and more content coming. I got an interview scheduled coming up here this week that I'll be able to publish here soon and more videos on the way. So anyways, thanks y'all. Talk to y'all later. God bless.